Monologue 39 Meditation Some have an understanding of meditation and many do not. Some religious sects regard it with suspicion, for it is rightly considered a practice that can open one up to negative or demonic influences. Thus, you should begin every meditation session with prayer. If you are doing your meditations as a part of your nightly devotions before your altar and in the sanctified safety thereof, there is little need to worry. However, the foundation of priestly training is meditation and visualization, and as such it is wise to follow sound instruction when practicing it. Foremost, wash your hands and face, and wash your mouth out with clean water, and then pray before you begin. The Lord's Prayer, Our Father, is sufficient for Christian-leaning Uriahs, while the Shepherd's Prayer, Psalm 23, is very powerful for Jewish-leaning Uriahs. A prayer of protection used by any of the seven monotheisms will work just as well. For you who follow a strictly Urian path, however, say the following. In the name of Emmanuel, may the limitless living light of God fill me and shine through me. May the holy angels of protection be sent to stand watch over me, and may the fire of God deliver me from all unclean, evil, and deceiving spirits and expressions. It is not advisable that you should lie down while meditating, unless using meditation to go to sleep. Though using a positive and relaxing visualization before and while falling asleep is useful for getting rid of repetitive nightmares. However, the normal purpose of meditation is not to enter a sleep state, but rather a state of relaxation between waking and sleeping. For the average seeker, meditation is simply a condition into which one enters to find relaxation and a method for listening to the subtle whispers of the Spirit of Truth that ministers to every heart, but is unheard by the unconscious masses. As prayer is speaking to God, so meditation is listening to God. As you begin your meditation, having said the prayer for protection, visualize a vast and brilliant sun, a star that is as bright as a thousand stars, shining in the void of space above the world. Relaxing your muscles, letting go of your worries, draw a long, deep breath, and then exhale very slowly. Continue to breathe in and out very slowly, and as you inhale, see a line of gold and white light drawn down from the eternal sun, known in ancient times as the Aten. Through the atmospheric levels of the sky above, and through the very roof of your house and into the top of your head, you have plugged into the trans-universal one, and with each subsequent inhale draw in more and more of its light, even as you might visualize the darkness within you being expelled with each exhale. The limitless living light is filled with love and positive regard. Allow it to fill you until you are overflowing with it, and the light, like water, is pouring onto the chair and saturating the area around you. Shine like a star. Let the rays of God radiate outward, penetrating the walls, ceiling, and floor, filling your entire home and beyond, lighting the whole world. Indeed, draw the line of light downward, beyond your body, out of your tailbone, into the floor, and all the way to the center of the earth and the myon therein, so that you have now become a bridge between heaven and earth, termed Duranki in ancient Samaria. When the line of light reaches the center of the earth and the spirit thereof, a blue-green fire will travel back up the line and into the center of your chest, where it will meet the light flowing downward from the limitless one. Visualize the two energies, the one from below and the one from above, joined in a brilliant flash and explosion of light and power that travels in a wave ring outward in all directions from you and around the entire planet. Sit in the radiance of heaven and earth and shine. In this way your spirit and soul are being welded together. A bridge is being formed between you and God, and also between yourself and the planet earth. Your radiance, with God's radiance, is filling the world and driving back the demonic, while connecting to every other son or daughter of heaven on the earth. Your light is not, therefore, under a bush or hidden from view, but in the astral layers above and below you have just become a beacon and a sign to the princes, powers, authorities, and dominions. 
Be in the light, and be the light, and begin now to chant as you rock slowly back and forth in your chair. A rocking chair is excellent for meditation, saying, I am in God, as God as in me. This is the primary meditation for those who would seek the priestly way, and is useful for the edification of all Urians. In place of the chant I have given you, chanting the name of God that you are most familiar with has great benefit, whether Emmanuel, Christ, Allah, yod heh vav -He, One Timeless Lord, Ahura Mazda, or some variation of these. In truth, the ancient names of the Most High, such as Anu, El, and Aten, can have some very unique effects. One of the most powerful and effective chants overall, however, is the original Jewish name of God, I Am That I Am, or in Hebrew, Aye Asher Aye. The rocking motion acts as a hypnotic motion, and the chanting focuses the mind and tends to help block out random thoughts. Chanting in a lit room is preferable for most, and yet, for the brave few, I would suggest a dark room. Material light, material things of the world around you, act as a filter and a barrier, and in darkness one will increase astral visions and perceive of things that might not otherwise be seen. However, one must be of strong mind and heart, calm and steadfast in the light and truth, in order to enter into dark room meditations. The innate fear of death and darkness, closed spaces and paranormal phenomenon, will deter the less courageous, and yet, Facing such fears is exactly the most important reason for dark room meditations.